Good morning. Uh, she said, I'm Alan Huff, um, and I'm the program manager for safety initiatives and public outreach with SJTPO. So as was mentioned, our primary role we think of is being a resource to our subregions whenever possible. So this includes assisting them with any challenges they experience in navigating the projects, uh, navigating them through the process. So over the course of the past several years, a number of issues have regularly arisen. So we've dedicated a portion of this RTP to bringing some of those issues to light and begin a more focused process of working to help our subregions overcome them. This is kind of a special uh, section of the RTP this year. The top five issues include funding imbalance, uh, major projects, inequitable access, regulatory burden, and infrastructure at risk. So we'll expand more on each of these in this discussion. So the first issue, funding imbalance. The amount of transportation funding to jurisdictions in the SJTPO region is not in proportion to its population, seasonally adjusted population, vehicle miles traveled, roadway mileage, or persons in poverty. So there have been long-standing concerns over a number of years expressed within the region that the funding that streams into South Jersey falls short of the needs of the region relative to the rest of the state. The four county SJTPO region is shown here uh, in the chart in blue. Uh, the other two portions of the state are in gray and orange. So following along with the blue numbers, you see that the funding that our region receives from NJDOT and NJ Transit combined total to 5.1% of the statewide funding. That's on the first line. Uh, compare that to year-round population, about 6.5%, seasonally adjusted population, so that accounts for summer residents as well as visitors in the region at any given time during the summer, almost 9%. Vehicle miles traveled, 7.5%. Roadway mileage, over 13%. Persons in poverty that live in our region, almost 9%. And on the bottom line, you can see that the average of all these factors together comes to 9%. And you can see that all of these fall below, or the funding falls below any of these factors. The second issue, major projects. So despite vast state revenue generated by the shore areas in Atlantic and Cape May counties, localities face a heavy lift moving major shore-oriented infrastructure investments forward and are often left to bear the full cost of those improvements. So as you know, the shore is a major economic engine, not just for our region, but for the state as a whole. In 2018 alone, the shore activity generated over $5 billion in state and local tax revenue. And Atlantic and Cape May counties lead the way in the state. They have the highest and second highest number of tourism trips with 20 million in Atlantic County, nearly 10 million in Cape May County. The local impact to the sh of the shore obviously can't be understated. Um, however, paying for the infrastructure for all these visitors is a major burden on local governments. Local roadways have to safely serve a large number of vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians. This requires a dense grid of intersections, many with signals, and each one of those signals can cost hundreds of thousands to replace. It's also important to note that bridges, boardwalks, seawalls, these are all very large, complex, ecologically sensitive infrastructure projects. Um, so it's important uh, to, to note, like as an example, that um, the Ocean Drive Bridge, which is the bridge that connects Wildwood Crest to Cape May in Cape May County, um, this is a local uh, roadway project, and it's expected to cost over $200 million. We're working with the county on this project right now. So despite all this, and despite the vast state revenue from tourism, the state assistance with these projects is minimal. Um, the only notable program for this is the iBank, the infrastructure bank. And, and don't get me wrong, it's an important program. Uh, essentially, it's a low interest loan program. That's what it is. Um, but the result of this is that the, the actual cost of all the projects is paid for by local governments. It's just a loan. And the third issue, inequitable access. So relative to the rest of the state, Vulnerable communities in the SJTPO region generally have limited access to mobility for their daily needs, and they face heavy burdens to improve mobility. So, you know, right off the bat, it's important to note that the SJTPO region is disadvantaged relative to the state as a whole in a number of ways, and those are discussed thoroughly in the plan. Uh, and, and as a result, there are big barriers 
uh, to mobility in the region. Public transit can put opportunities within reach for people in need. However, we frequently hear public concerns about access to transit, the frequency of service, the lack of facilities, and the list goes on. When we reviewed funding, we see that there are notable discrepancies between the historic transit funding that our region receives. Uh, as you can see here, 2.7% of, of the total funding over the last 15 years. Relative to population, as I mentioned, we're 6.5% of the state's population. And persons in poverty, you can see here, 8.7%. So in addition to this transit issue, there are a number of other practices and procedures that limit the ability of low-income communities to equitably serve their residents. Uh, while the first two here, uh, regarding federal funds and bus shelters, you, you can read for yourself, and they speak for themselves. But the last two I wanted to dig into a little bit more. So federal responsible charge. Um, for federal projects, responsible charge refers to requirements that local governments designate a full-time public employee to be in charge of a project. This is important and it makes sense, but um, for jurisdictions that are either too small or just don't have the resources, uh, this is this is a major barrier and puts those communities at a disadvantage. And last, I'll just note that often state and county governments leave the responsibility of sidewalk maintenance or construction along their roadways to municipalities and property owners. Uh, and this is a much greater burden in low-income communities. Uh, fourth issue is regulatory burden. So environmental regulations, especially in the Pinelands, are disproportionate to the impacts of projects and often make low impact safety and quality of life projects difficult to advance. So as you can see in the map here, the SJTPO region largely falls under either the Pinelands or CAFRA environmental regulatory areas. So specifically here, we're talking about the Pinelands area in green. Local jurisdictions experience major obstacles in completing essential transportation projects, particularly in the Pinelands area which adds notable time and cost to their projects. The Pinelands Master Plan offers limited compromise. The result is that roadways in the Pinelands are often left in various stages of disrepair. The big picture concern is that the benefits of the Pineland are shared across the state. However, the cost and burden of the Pinelands bear fall squarely on local communities within the Pinelands area. And, all right, and the, the last issue, infrastructure at risk. So sea level rise, increased storm severity, and increases in precipitation, all the result of climate change, put aging, already taxed infrastructure in the SJTPO region at risk. So the first of these three, sea level rise. So the New Jersey coastal area is more, much more likely, 66% more likely to experience sea level rise of half to one foot by 2030 and one to two feet by 2050. It's important to note that this is because um, the New Jersey shore line is actually sinking while oceans are also rising. Areas are expected to be impact, areas expected to be impacted by two feet of sea level rise, which could be as early as 2050, is shown here in blue on the map. And this comes from Rutgers. Uh, next, storm surge. So as you may know, storm surge refers to water being pushed on shore by a storm's winds. Uh, this map shows the impact of storm surge from a category three storm, which would be similar to Superstorm Sandy. Uh, it's important to note that, you know, one category three storm would not hit all the points identified in red here. Uh, this generally reflects a direct hit from a storm. So, uh, you know, a storm that hits Atlantic City head on would have a lesser impact down in Cape May and vice versa. And uh, the last item in this section is regarding increased rainfall. So while storm surge and sea level rise are the headlines, uh, a much quieter but equally important impact of climate change is actually annual rainfall. So this has been on the rise in New Jersey. It's up uh, four inches annually, you know, per year over the past century. Uh, 2018 went on record as the most uh, rainfall in recorded history, uh, despite there not being any big storms that year. Most scientists and researchers expect the frequency and intensity of the storms to increase. As a result, more flooding. 
Next slide. Um, so SJTPO is going to work with our partners in the coming years to try to address these issues. Um, and here are some ways that we've identified to start that work. So for all the issues, we need to work to communicate the impacts of each one of these to the public and to elected officials in hopes of moving the needle. Regarding the funding imbalance issue, we want to work with our partners to focus discussions on funding that strikes a better balance throughout the state. We also need to work with our national partners, uh, groups uh, like the Association of MPOs, to focus on national conversations uh, that look at equity for funding uh, for rural areas and uh, work to merge roadway and transit funding conversations. So that way, uh, all trips are considered when we look at funding. For major projects, we want to work with our partners to try to identify funding opportunities and work to better uh, quantify the revenues generated in our shore communities and communicate that effectively with the public and elected officials. Regarding inequitable access, We'll work with our partners to find ways to remove barriers and when that's not possible to provide assistance uh, to those communities and work with NJ Transit and others to identify and investigate public concerns about transit service and better incorporate equity into service decisions. Regarding the regulatory burden issue that I talked about with the Pinelands, uh, we will work with our partners to try to convene a gathering of those impacted by the Pinelands issues similar to ours, um, and identify sensible solutions to advance projects without sacrificing environmental protection. And lastly, for the infrastructure at risk, we'll continue to promote projects and plans that reduce vehicle emissions, work to advance mitigation and adaptation strategies, such as modeling sea level rise and storm surge, as well as assessing the vulnerability of our infrastructure and working with partners on emergency preparedness planning and education, as well as stormwater management. And uh, so we've talked about how SGTPO is gonna try to move the needle. If you're interested in getting involved, the two most important things that you can do are familiarize yourself with the five critical issues, which you can find in chapter two of the RTP. And second, you can contact your state and federal representatives to make sure that issues that our region faces are on their radar, things like funding formulas to make sure that they're equitable for rural areas like ours, um, dedicated funding for shore infrastructure that makes so much of the state's economic activity possible, ensuring that equity for small and rural communities is a part of transit decision making, that the Pinelands process can be streamlined for critical projects that have minimal environmental impacts, and to support funding to to solidify our infrastructure. Realistically, legislation is what moves the needle. So you can actually have a bigger impact than we can. Your, your role really, really is important. Um, finally, I'll just note a last item of interest regarding equity in South Jersey communities. Um, while we are focused on transportation and their um, view is wider, but it's worth a read and it's worth keeping that in circulation. 